Hello and welcome to the Celtic Way morning briefing for Tuesday, October the 4th. It's one more sleep until Celtic are back in Champions League action against German Bundesliga side RB Leipzig. And with me to discuss some of the early threads of that match and start building up to it is TCW news writer Aidan McDonald. How's things, Aidan? Enjoying that, that lovely weather out there? Oh, it's excellent, Sean. It's excellent. How are you? I know, bad. Uh, I was going to take my daughter swimming, but I can just walk outside with her now, I think. Um, anyway, as always, before we start, a nice wee reminder that we've got a, a, a wee subscription deal running for you just now uh, on the website. One pound for two months of full access, and that's for everything that's on there, uh, everything we do. So big interviews, features, data analysis, tactics, all sorts. I'll put a link in the comments. In fact, up on there this morning, we have two what I would describe as quality pieces uh, from columnists Stuart Ross and James Daly. And Stuart, uh, as, he, as he does as a scout, has gone deep into RB Leipzig and looks at where they can hurt Celtic and crucially vice versa. Um, well, James's article critiques Ange Postacoglu's kind of self-inflicted assessment in terms of looking at the underlying data to uh, explore how wasteful Celtic have really been this season. Both enjoyable, both worth a read. Uh, I'll put the links to both of them in the comments. And as always, to subscribe, it's www.celticway.co.uk forward slash subscribe. Uh, OK, Aidan, Leipzig. Um, Celtic on one point after two games. Leipzig on zero, having played the same two teams. Shakhtar away to Real Madrid later tomorrow night as well, which uh, might be getting brushed over slightly. But you're basically hoping that Real take maximum points from now until Celtic strip to the Bernabeu, aren't you? Yeah, you would hope so, Sean, if they could kind of just push through and win the group, but would then open it up in the rest of positions. Uh, I think it is. It's a really, really important game. And, uh, yeah, hopefully we can get some sort of result from it. Uh, B coming in with a comment here. Time to stop shipping crazy goals, Celtic, please. Might actually enjoy James Daly's article then because he talks about that part a wee bit as well as the as well as scoring them or missing them, uh, however you want to put it. Um, what do you make of this comment? Aidan Markey, I don't think players have any problem losing their game for Europe. It's actually the league games that have been trouble. Do you agree with that? Uh, I mean, I guess maybe you could say the last couple of league games have maybe struggled to mm. kind of get a, a good flow going. And probably in both Champions League games, they've not played particularly bad. The 3 0 Madrid defeat, obviously, we've spoken about already over the mm. last couple of weeks, how there was plenty of positives to take from it. And Celtic maybe could have had a couple of goals. Shakhtar, good performance, even though it was a frustrating result. But I think overall, particularly up until before that St. Martin game, we were doing pretty well in the league. Mm-hmm. No, I'd, I'd agree with that. I think it's, apart from that St. Martin game, and I realise what, what, what they're getting at, what, what Mark's getting at, isn't necessarily the result, but more the performance. And I can kind of, I can see the, I can see the logic with that. Again, that ties into James's uh, article about, uh, wastefulness and profligacy in front of goal, that kind of thing, because they're still scoring a lot. They do, they do still get their goals. It's just you can, basically the way James puts it in his article is if you're coming away for a lot of games now, we are feeling that Celtic are missing a lot of big chances. The data will probably support that, even though they're still scoring a good amount per game, and that's even dis- just discarding the nine 0 That's not just because of that. So I think Mark's got a point. That said, one point from a potential six doesn't suggest that the game's been raised enough in Europe, I would suggest, I, w- I would say then. Um, fast starts, but again, missed chances, Aidan, I would say. Yeah, that, that probably has been frustrating for, well, the manager's spoken about having it been more clinical, and it's definitely been uh, frustrating for the fans as well. And I think if we are able to get a fast start against Leipzig tomorrow night, uh, you you know, you might only get a couple of chances in the whole game, and you never know. Maybe they don't, maybe they come in the first 10, 15 minutes. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it, we're going to need to be more clinical, Sean, if I want to progress out of this group, definitely. As John Hill saying, just need to start on the front foot, which I think they have been doing in Europe to to their credit. Uh, quick passing and movement. Anything in the Champions League is a bonus. The league is top priority. It's early days for the Celtic team. Do you think of that, Aidan? I'm very much of a well. If you're in it look to win it kind of thing. I know that's daft for the Champions League maybe, but nonetheless. Well, to, to be fair, Sean, uh, that is what uh, Andrew said. He's talking about, uh, he's talking, well, obviously he's originally thought about building the club as a Champions League team. Mm. Eventually he wants to get to the stage where being in it's not an achievement, it's about going into the latter stages. Mm. And even though he's maybe not specifically said, as you would expect, he's not fully aligned his hopes for Europe this year, I'd imagine he'll be wanting to try and get through to the last 16. Particularly if we pick up something tomorrow night 
like if we get a point, or I don't want to jinx it. I mean, a win would be amazing, but also a point <laughs> would be a really good result as well. If we were to pick up a point in a uh, Shakhtar lose to Real Madrid, going into uh, two of your last uh, three games in the group would be at home. So Celtic would be in a really yeah. strong position then to try and qualify if, if that was to happen. So I think particularly based off the result tomorrow night, Andrew will be wanting to try and get through. I don't think he'll accept uh, just being there. Mm-hmm. No, I don't, I don't think so either. I think the way that they've set up, the way that they've gone at, particularly Real Madrid, um, but Shakhtar as well, shows you the attitude they're going to have. Not that anybody should really have doubted that anyway. I mean, it's, it's what he's been saying since he came in. It's what he said during the Europa League last year, and that was with a team and a squad that was still getting to know each other, still learning what he expected. Uh, he always points to that Leverkusen 4-0 game, despite the fact they get absolutely shafted at home. It kind of clicked for him that they were taking in what he was asking that kind of thing so I don't think it should be a surprise to anybody that that is the way that Celtic are approaching it now in practice whether that's the way it plays out or not can shift game to game but I certainly think that there's there's reasons to be optimistic getting into the double header even though Celtic's record in Germany and away in general in Europe's pretty poor um, but in terms of Leipzig specifically Aiden, well Celtic and Leipzig they played one another in the Europa League uh, in 2018 of course Celtic actually qualified ahead of them, which you might want to read into as a wee harbouring of things to come. But uh, they traded wins that campaign, 2-0 and 2-1. So 2-0 to Leipzig, I think, was it? And Celtic won 2-1. Um, yeah, now, Leipzig, Leipzig actually still have a fair few of that squad kicking about just now, Aidan. So get the likes of Willie Orban, centre-back, uh, Kevin Campbell in midfield, Lucas Klosterman and Marcel Hastenberg, defenders. Emil Forsberg was there at the time, Yusuf Poulsen. Timo Werner's back as well. He was there back then. He's obviously left and, and then come back. Celtic, by contrast, still have four players, technically, at the club who could make the squad. Can you name them before the viewers can name them, Aidan? Uh, if it's total the squad players, then uh, obviously Callum McGregor, the obvious one. Uh, yep. James Forrest. Yep. Scott Bain. Yes, I have you taken a note of this before then? No, no, surprisingly <laughs> not. I'm trying to think of the other one. Uh, I thought you'd have got this one before Bane. I'm not gonna lie, I I'd have, I'd have forgot Bane, I think. Uh, nah, I can't I can't think of another one. The Bricky, Tony Ralston. Oh, of course, Tony uh, Ralston, sorry. I we see we see oh yeah, you know what? I'm forgetting I yeah, obviously there was a the season before that when he played in the, the Champions League. Yeah, that's a it's a good show. Uh now on the subject of making squads, with a few comments about uh, Cameron Carter Vickers, Aiden. The last we heard, that there'll be another update later on in the day, but uh, Ange Postacoglu still said it was a day to day testing thing. Um, if I'm looking for a silver lining and looking for a, a positive spin, I think that means that he probably will make it, but that might be me reading too much into it, would you think? If he's fit, does he play then? Put it that way. Yeah, I don't think yeah. it's the sort of game where he'd be on the bench. Even if he was 60, 70 percent. I think if there's any sort of chance he's going to play, he will start. Uh, it's you know, it, it's such an important position at centre half. I, I think if he was available to get at least some minutes, it would be almost just pointless if he was on the bench. You know, it'd better to yeah. have him on from the start if he is available. It may be it is a bit of a risk. I, I don't know. It also we don't know what his fitness is. I know you were talking about last week that the kind of reports from the USA camp well that it was kind of like a minor injury. Mm-hmm. Whereas I don't know if Ange ever kind of said it like that. I don't. No, I don't. Did. I don't think he did. No. Um, the minor thing, without them getting very specific about the ins and outs of it and the, the intricacies of, of a time scale and stuff, saying it was minor was all well and good to me. But it was all, it was serious enough for him to miss the St Mirren game and then miss the international break. Yeah, so that's like three weeks yeah, already, yeah. so it's hardly yeah. minor at that stage if you're missing almost a month. So we'll see. But the fact that, as opposed to Coglu mentioned at the weekend, he was being assessed day by day. If you're day to day, that that means there is a good chance, or there is a chance anyway. Uh, and I tend to agree with you. If there's if he passes a fitness test that he can play a part, I would rather have him on from the start and then withdraw him rather than throw him on because they're not coping that well, that kind of thing. Uh, Kevin Porter's comment says uh, the defence worries him for tomorrow, needs Carter Vickers in there because he brings a calmness to the defence and to Joe Hart. I don't know. I, I mean, I, that's a good point, Aidan. I don't know if it's something that's measurable uh, because it's an individual thing, it's an inherent thing. But do you get the impression that Carter Vickers 
not only brings a calmness to his partner, because I think that can be seen in Carol Starfield's upturn last year, but also to Joe Hart. Do you think that's a fair fair assessment? Uh, I, I think he probably brings a calmness to the kind of whole just defensive back line, if I want to just include the goalkeeper in that. Mm-hmm. You know, given how limited goals we conceded in the league last year, when Carter Vick, also Starfield as well, but when Carter Vickers was playing, I think that would probably mm-hmm. dictate that he did bring a calmness. And I think, you know, when, he, when he's got the ball, when he's, he's passing it out from the back or, you know, running forward, but he very rarely loses it. You know, you would always usually fancy, fancy him when somebody's facing him up one-to-one. So I'd imagine if you're a goalkeeper and you kind of, you've got those two points in your head, you would be a bit more calmer when Carter Vickers is there. Probably, like, from Joe Hart's point of view, he probably would feel most comfortable, I would guess, when that partnership or staff felt with Carter Vickers were there, mm-hmm. just because that's what he was used to playing with for the majority of last season. Uh, but, yeah, I'd imagine having somebody a uh, big CCV's quality would, you know, would you go down the games a bit more confident? Jim Stevenson says he fears the defence if it's Jens and Welsh. Uh, I can see I can see why people might have their doubts, and I don't think... Welsh has been coming in for a bit of criticism for his, his performance at the weekend, but I don't think it was awful. I think it was more, I mean, it was very, very little to deal with, to be honest. Uh, he got his booking for kind of making up for his own mistake as well, I suppose you could say. But more than anything else, to I me, mean, I kind of touched on this yesterday when we spoke, Aidan, was the, I noticed Carl McGregor in particular being quite vocal to Welsh, but to both of them, even if Welsh a wee bit, a wee bit more, about how quickly he was getting the ball out and passing it. And that he wasn't doing it quick enough, that kind of thing. Because I think he's shown before he has got it in him. But I don't know if it's a confidence thing. I don't know if it's if it's something to do with that. Maybe because he was in the team at the start of the season, fell ill, was out of the team, only get back in because Carter Vickers was, was injured, that kind of thing. I don't know if it's a, a confidence issue, but he wasn't taking the opportunity sometimes to pass it, which is why McGregor was being a wee bit more vocal with him, I felt. Yeah, to be honest, it probably is a confidence uh, issue coming off that performance against St Mum, maybe he was really feeling that, you know, me mm-hmm. and James, we've both got to put in a really big performance here. And like you said, he'd done okay. Uh, maybe it wasn't like a vintage performance in either of them, but I, I can understand people's worries. You know, it's a good team you're going to be playing. Uh, I think you'd probably be concerned regardless of who was playing at the back, <laughs> uh, just given that we know Leipzig is a good side. But obviously, if the two first-choice centre-halves were available, you'd maybe feel a wee bit better about it, but... Look, if that's if they're both going to need to play, that's just the card you've kind of been dealt. You just need to do it. Sean Malloy says 100% or not, Carter Vickers, I presume he's, he's meaning is not worth the risk. He's too important to the team. Uh, he would rather go without him for the Leipzig game and then come back for the, the home game against Leipzig rather than risk losing him long term. It's a fair point, Aidan. Yeah, I mean, I'd imagine if it's a situation like that where if he plays, there's a high chance he could be out long term, then yeah. I don't expect him to play. It's more just like if it's if he is quite close, but if it's that sort of situation that him playing 65, 70 minutes tomorrow night and he's out for like two months, then yeah, obviously just don't play him. But hopefully it's a wee bit better than that. Uh, continuing with the making squads thing now, you'll remember last season, uh, Aidan Leila Bada and Nia Beaton missed the Real Betis game. In the Europa League for religious reasons. Oh, I certainly do because me and Tony both had a bad and I pre- uh, predicted all of us before we realised they wasn't going to be playing. But um, anyway, it was due to Yom Kippur. And this year that falls this mid this midweek, actually falls from uh, from sundown tonight until tomorrow evening. So technically, technically it will be over when the match is ready to kick off tomorrow night. But given it's likely that he won't have trained and potentially won't have trained and depending on the timing of flights, etc., and Postecoglou might confirm later on that he's not even travelled, so we need to wait and see on that one. But it could be that there's no a bad aid. And so, what does that do to one Celtic's chances, in your opinion, and two your thoughts on a potential team lineup without spoiling the predicted 11s article, of course? Uh, I, obviously, it does make you a wee bit weaker. We know how lethal a bad can be. And we know how quick he is, particularly on counter attacks and things like that. They always think about uh, the quick goal away to AZ Altmar last season when he played the cross uh, along the box for Kyogo. It's, yeah, it would, it would be a blow not to have him, but uh, obviously there is other players there that could come in and fill mm-hmm. that role. Maida, uh, Haskovanovic, etc. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jota can also move across to the right as well. So uh, there is depth there, but. Uh, 
Yeah, if a bad wasn't available, there, there's no uh, denying you'd be a wee bit weaker given how lethal he's been this season and last season. Haksabanovic started the last European game, of course, which was a bit of a, a bit of surprise at the time. Um, Sean Curran pointing out that there's fasting involved for Yom Kippur as well. So again, it's, it's it looks unlikely, even though this I think it's until sundown tomorrow. And technically, I looked it up. The sundown in Germany is meant to be before the kickoff, but obviously everything else comes before it. And usually, uh, Jews that are observing Yom Kippur will, will refrain from any activity, so they probably won't have trained, probably won't fly that kind of thing. But we'll find out from Ange to Coglu later. Um, but on the assumption he's out, if you had to pick one to start, who would it be over him? Uh, I think it Assuming would be, he was going to start for you to begin with, obviously. But uh, To be honest, I think he probably would have started for me. Uh, so I'll go for I'll go for Haksavanovic, who I know in the last kind of European game maybe did come in for a wee bit of criticism for his performance. Obviously, since then, he's had a few more appearances here and there. I think he would come in uh, just because, obviously, I know Maida has been getting a wee bit of criticism recently. I think somebody's mm-hmm. been a wee bit unfair to go on. I don't think he's been yeah. as bad. Uh, as some people have been saying, but I think it'd be Hacks of Banovich for me, Sean, to be honest. Uh, it's intriguing with, uh, with Maida because I keep tipping him to start in the Champions League, and I think away from home, I, I would have thought would have been ideal, but mm-hmm. even the last uh, away the last away game, um, sorry, they've played at home twice, haven't they? For in, in the Champions League? No, sorry, Shakhtar was away, Shakhtar was away, so yeah. he never started. Um, Against Real Madrid and stuff, he came on at half time. That I don't know. There's an odd an oddity there with mind in the Champions League this season. I think given Haksabanovic started the last European game, as Andrew Galea saying here, there is a chance he plays if Abada isn't available. Jota will start regardless, we know that. I think Kyogo will start regardless of what's going on with Yakimakis. Um I don't know. I think I might tip Maida again, Aiden. I, I keep maybe my glutton for punishment with it, but I keep thinking he'll start. To be fair, I mean, a lot of his attributes would be suited to playing away from home, you know, counter-attacking, being able to kind of neutralise whoever's on their side going forward. So, you seen what he did that uh, when he came on against Shakhtar. I know a lot of it was maybe about missed chances, but he done quite well at keeping Mudrich quiet in the second half when he mm-hmm. came on in that match. So, I can probably understand why Andrew would be starting him. It was just kind of based off the way it was maybe going for him in the last couple of games. That was the only reason I was kind of thinking... Had to manage, but to be fair, that's in one game. Nobody really played well. It wasn't no. even either. He was probably just maybe getting highlighted. But I think if either of them was to play Maida or Hatsabanovic, I wouldn't have any issue, to be honest. A few comments about Oliver Abelgard in the in the in the, uh, in the stream here. I don't see him starting, Aiden. I think maybe you might see it at the weekend, but I, I don't think you'll see it um tomorrow night. There are a couple of people suggesting he could play centre back. I think there's even less chance of that. Um, because I think the dent and confidence that that would potentially uh, put onto Jens or Welsh or whoever whoever dropped out, or one of the two of them, obviously, probably wouldn't be worth it. Um, starting a centre mid in their place for a bigger game basically says to them, we don't trust you at that point, I, w- I would suggest. So I don't think that happens either. Uh, but do you think there's any chance he starts in midfield? A double uh, pivot? I don't think so, even though this is probably the sort of game that he based off what we've seen all the scouting and kind of tactical why this is what it'd be kind of suited for. Uh, you know, the game away from home in Europe. I, I don't think he'll start. Uh, firstly, because I think he will probably start at the weekend or play some sort of part of the weekend anyway, given that McGregor's out. Yep. Uh, so I do think Andrew will probably try and get minutes at some point tomorrow night uh, for that reason. I don't think he would play at centre-half, like you say. Firstly, because I know it's a position he's played before, but... If he goes in there, has a shocker, it could, you know, that could be a real dent to his confidence. Secondly, like you were saying, it could be damaging for Jens and Welsh. Uh, mm-hmm. If they've if they've been playing suddenly somebody who's not the last centre back is playing their position, so I would expect that Abogard, if he's involved tomorrow, will be off the bench. Uh, Kevin Ferrier saying if it's not a bad, I'll go with Maida. Uh, Andrew Galea saying Ange played the sub early last time and the time before. To be fair. Uh, Haksabanovic is always going to play a half only. Some see it as an odd kind of tactical thing, but um, I suppose it depends on the result whether it's a, a positive or a negative. Um, I, I I don't know. I, put it this way, I'm going to have to give my predicted Oliver a serious bit of consideration again this week because it's it's uh, 
it's an odd one. Brian Robertson, um, is James A. Forrest fasting too? <laughs> That's a shame. Uh, Gary Smith, what about James Forrest? Is there any chance of that, Aidan? I personally don't think so, but... Uh, I'm sure he'll be on the bench, but I just I, I just can't see him suddenly uh-huh. appearing in a Champions League game, particularly when there is options, as much as a bad is probably not going to be available. You know, as we've spoken about Maida, Haksabanovic, Shaw, uh-huh. being able to move across, there is options there. It's not like we are kind of... I don't mean to disrespect James Forrest, but it's not like we're down at the bare bones. Do you know what I mean? Mm. I, I can't see him starting the game. I think if he was going to get thrown in, it could be one of these maybe domestic games, maybe coming up where you've got the European game uh, midweek and he's maybe resting a couple of players. I just think it'd be a bit strange, to be honest, Sean, if he nah, was to drop in. I think, uh, as I said, I had no kind of issue with him getting a new contract, James Forrest, because I feel the homegrown quote, all that kind of stuff, been at the club so long, experience, still scored a couple of crucial goals last season. I think it all depended on people's expectations. If the expectations were of James Forrest from 2017 or, or whatever, yeah. then, then you'd be sorely disappointed. If the expectations were of a, a man willing to embrace a squad role where you're only really playing if it's a cup game or if there's a few injuries or there's a, a real need to rotate and you still pop up with a couple of crucial goals throughout the season, then I, I don't see a problem. Uh, I don't think there's a likelihood that he starts these kind of games out with th- those scenarios, though. Yeah, I think for him to be starting a kind of three games in a Champions League group at this stage of his career, there wouldn't to be quite a lot of injuries or suspensions, etc. But as we mentioned, you know, legend at the club, and he's still got a role because if Celtic want to fight across all fronts, there's going to be cup games, there's going to be games where players are tired and you need somebody to come on way on to potentially win league games or that and Forrest mm-hmm. can fulfil that role. No problem. He's just probably not the player that's going to be starting, you know, a crucial Champions League game at this stage of his career. Uh, Sons of Scotland saying Maida will play. Him and Kyogo will be right on top of the Leipzig defenders to give them no time on the ball or to pick passes out. I hope so. And then the last bit of Sons of Scotland's thing, great video last night, Sean. Now he's referring to a... Uh, uh, I'll put a link in the comments to it. I recorded a, a, another Champions League preview special ahead of the match this time. It was with Bundesliga expert Stefan Binkowski. So I'd urge you to give that a wee watch because he knows his stuff big time. And it maybe even made me slightly more positive about the chances of an away result, Aidan. I don't know about you. Yeah, particularly when uh, Stefan was mentioning that uh, they'd recently just beaten the worst team in the week. Bochum, and before yeah. that, and bef- uh, also he was saying how Dortmund haven't been many great shakes. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that did make me feel a little bit more positive. Hopefully, I'm not just psyching myself up for a fall. But uh, <laughs> yeah, no, it was, a, it was a really good video showing me a lot of good analysis. So if anybody's wanting to know more about Leipzig, I would definitely make, recommend watching that. It was the uh, the emphasis on the kind of fallibility of Leipzig fullbacks that that got me kind of a wee bit more confident with it because obviously Celtic strengths. A lot of Celtic strengths lie in their wing play. That's why I was kind of hoping a badder would be would be fit because he, he was talking about. A couple of, a couple of, um, what was it? He said one of the fullbacks is prone to ball watching, and we know Abada likes to expose a bit of ball watching at the back post. So we, I don't know. It kind of, it boded well for me. But if if Abada's out, I still think there's enough there in terms of wingers that should be threatening. If what Stefan says come to pass, and that the fullbacks are, are are there to be got at, then Jota obviously will start. He will look to get at people, and uh, whether it's Maida, Haksabanovic, even if it is James Forrest. Regardless, um, I still think if that's the case, there will be somewhere to, to, to expose them. Um, before we kind of start wrapping things up, just to put in again that we're running a, a Twitter competition. We're giving away a Celtic home top uh, on our Twitter account. So I'll put the link in the comments. If you want to get involved in that, you either follow the link, which will take you to the post that you need to retweet. Uh, make sure you follow the account or just go to the Celtic Way Twitter account, which is at Celtic Way 1888 and uh, retweet the post, follow the account, and that's you in the draw for, uh, for Friday. And I'll remind you every day up until then, and I'll not do it until after this on Friday, so we'll plenty of time left. Um, but unless you've got anything else to add, Aidan, I think we'll, we'll call time there today and continue this preview build-up to the a crucial Leipzig game tomorrow, shall we? Yeah, sounds good, Sean. Yep. Uh, thank you for your input, as always, Aidan, and thanks yes. to all the commenters. Always appreciate your... Uh, you getting involved. It makes you show what it is. Uh, we'll be back to chat to you all again live tomorrow morning, as usual. So cheers for joining. Cheers, guys.